But I look down from my tall window Down to the busy street of mine I couldn't hear a sound that was louder Than the one inside my mind Instead of trees the kids were climbing Up telephone antenna poles Their mothers sat on brown park benches And were waiting to get old Don't we all like to go out dancing To the sound of a guitar strum Yes, it brings us back together Though sometimes I wonder how Cause to me it's just another Way to neutralize check, my check, eyes check. From seeing the daily weary faces For an hour that I'm alive Still I'm playing out for nickels I keep him in a wooden drawer so that one day I can afford her diamonds and pearls but when I hold her head I understand that she's worth a whole lot more than I could ever In my room there's no mistaking I have the world upon my lap And with my steel guitar I slide it Endless stream of misfortunes out But the song that I am singing I've sung it a thousand times or more It never changed the way I acted Once I went outside the door Still I'm playing out for nickels I keep them in a wooden drawer So that one day I can afford her diamonds and pearls But when I hold her head I understand that she's worth Yes, when I hold her head, I understand that she's worth a whole lot more than I could ever afford. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. It is so good to see you on what is normally our night for live streaming here on my channel. I am so, exci so excited to be doing this with you all. Uh, first, I've got I've got a bit of I got a bit of news tonight and we're going to talk about a few other things before we kind of get into the tasting. Let some people get in here. First, my friend Wright Thompson, the author of Pappy Land, became the first author to have a whiskey-related book to make the bestseller list. So how about it, everybody? Give you a round of applause to Wright Thompson and his book Pappy Land. So I, I look at Pappy Land as obviously it's a, it's a very important book. Um, you know, it, it, it covers Pappy Van Winkle, but it, more importantly, it covers the story of Julian. And and kind of like his his rise and his, the things he's dealt with. So if you haven't gotten that book, please go check that out. 
Uh, you know, Wright's been on the show before. He's uh, he's just a great dude, and I'll tell you that he's somebody that uh, uh, I'm I, I welcome with open arms in the whiskey community. We need more people like him. So, if you all haven't gotten that yet, I think um, I think you should go check it out. Hey, Raymond uh, Salazar says first time for a live stream. How about it for? For Mr. Salazar, Ramon, Ramon Salazar, welcome. So uh, a couple of the other things that I'm really excited about. Now I am throwing a virtual party, a virtual party called um, Repeal Day Expo. It's repealdayexpo.com. It is in a virtual world called Deggy World, where you're going to be able to get your own avatar. Unfortunately, we've already sold out of the double platinum tickets. That was the highest ticket level, but we still have platinum level and we still have gold level. So make sure you go to repealdayexpo.com and go check that out because you definitely, definitely want to get in on this Repeal Day Expo because we're celebrating the end of Prohibition. Right now, there's more than 50 spirits brands that are going to be a part of it. It's going to be very exciting. I can't wait for it, and it gives you a chance to interact with distillers in a way that uh, you can't right now. You can't be with person. As Rarebird101 says, it's like Tron, but with booze. Uh, Leonard Westman says, greetings from Hayden Lake, Idaho. Hey, what's going on, Leonard? I love Idaho. Boise is one of my favorite cities. There's a hotel there that's like these old 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 this old timey hotel, or, or it's a motel. Great cocktails there. I cannot, I cannot remember the name of it. It's like Motel 18 or something. Um, Mark uh, Zyla says that was a great book. Just finished it, talking about Pappy Land, of course. My buddy uh, Wright Thompson is the first, has the first whiskey book to make the New York Times bestseller list. A lot of people always confuse me that I made a best, the New York Times bestseller list. I have not made that list. I made the Wall Street Journal bestseller list, and I made it with my book Camera Boy. Uh, I couple of my books have made, couple of my whiskey books have made bestseller lists. The um, one of them made like um, this is, shows you how much I keep up with it. But one of them made like the the Boston bestseller list. Uh, one of them made like you know the Daily Oklahoma bestseller list. So these these tend to be like I go and do an event somewhere, and then. And then they a lot of people buy books, and, and that's how it works. But the New York Times is the creme de la creme. That's the one every author wants to get on. And you just cannot believe how, how hard it is to make that list. So I just think it's fantastic that we have a whiskey book on that list. And it's by a great person. And it's about a great person in Julian Van Winkle and the author, Wright Thompson, of course. Uh, Fred Smurf says, hey, Fred, drinking old fashions. In memory of my father, who would have been 92 today. Aw. Everybody, how about it uh, for Mr. Smurf? Give uh, give him your wishes as he remembers his father, who would have been 92 today. And, of course, that's what we are here. We're a whiskey community. And um, it's all about, it's all about like, you know, having a drink and, you know, sharing memories. And it's it's been a real pleasure to... To be able to have a drink with you all throughout COVID, through 2020, which has been a very strange year, and you know to share these memories together, it may be like in a chat, it may be in camera, it may be in a members-only live stream, but I've had a great time just doing this, and I can't thank you all enough for, for tuning in, checking this out, and if this is your first time coming, click that subscribe button because we have streams, we have cool episodes coming down the pike. Uh, tomorrow I've got an artist interview at one o'clock. We're going to drink some whiskey and he's going to sing a couple live songs. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be fantastic. Going to be fantastic. And let's, let's kind of get into the programming. You all keep getting these, uh, questions in, ask whatever you like, but you know, you can see in the comment section what we are tasting tonight. Um, and it is. Old Fitzgerald, bottled and bond. This is the 16-year-old that came out in the spring this year. Now, I bought this one 
And so normally I, I always like to tell you all like how I got the product because a lot of time I get like samples, but I always like to tell you how I got it. So I did buy this one at retail and uh, it's 16 years old. Old Fitzgerald uh, coincidentally was the Pappy Van Winkle's brand for a long time. Heaven Hill bought it in the late 1990s after uh, United Distillers who owned Sitza Weller basically decided that they didn't want to be much in the Kentucky bourbon game anymore, so they got rid of a lot of their stocks, and that's why there was a flood of Stitzel Weller out on the source market, as well as uh, Weller going to Sazerac and Old Fitzgerald going to Heaven Hill. So, tasting that up against uh, its sister product in William Heaven Hill, Bottle and Bond. This is a distillery-only release. I also bought this one. This is a 13-year-old gem. Uh, this is this year's release. Now, you may recall, this took second in a live stream uh, not too long ago. And that is a very complex, very beautiful, very tasty one. Now, I have not tasted the old Fitzgerald one yet, but I do recall the William Heaven Hill being so good. Now, this is obviously a media sample sent to me by Heaven Hill. This is their 85th anniversary, 13-year-old uh, single barrel that they are uh, putting out there in honor of their company. Now, Heaven Hill is a very important, very important distillery, very important company. Um, it's founded by the Shapira brothers, a Jewish family that really just brings a lot of talent to uh, Kentucky bourbon in a time that it needed it and needed the, you know, coming out of prohibition, the industry needed people who could think outside the box. And, you know, you have Max Shapiro who comes into the to the game. You know, he is a, a Harvard MBA grad and he is so sharp. I put him and like Mark Brown as kind of like go back and forth as like who is the best like CEO in bourbon. Max Shapira is an absolute genius. And he's somebody that, you know, people like to talk about Wild Turkey and Maker's Mark as having kind of like cult followings. I tell you what, do not sell yourself short on the power of Evan Williams. Evan Williams Black Label with like uh, Blue Collar America, it is, it moves a lot, you know. And I remember watching these uh, these bass tournaments and Heaven Hill would, would basically have all kinds of Evan Williams um, uh, marketing all around. Now, these are basically the creme de la creme of Heaven Hill this year. I've taken. I thought. Well, I've been. I haven't tasted the old fits, sixteen-year-old. But everything I've heard, and I mean, it's sixteen-year-old weeded bourbon. I mean, come on, it's got to be good. But I have had the. I've had the William Heaven Hill, and I haven't had this the um, the single barrel yet. But we know that they're going to put out something that's going to be special uh, to celebrate their eighty-fifth anniversary. So you know that these are definitely going to be upper tier of Heaven Hill. And doesn't matter what I say here tonight. They're going to sell out no matter where they are. I mean, right now you could put bourbon in a tin can, um, you know, and throw some dirt in it, and people would probably buy it. It's just ridiculous what the market's like. But when we get to these, when we get to these allocated products, what I like to do is I like to test them up against something like Rare Breed. And Rare Breed, to me, is this beat, uh, this beat out... Um, uh, Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. Uh, it basically has won all of my blind tastings with the exception of one that I have had this year. This is probably the best bang for your buck right now in American whiskey. But I've got to put it through a couple more blind tastings before I can really kind of, you know, say that a little bit further. But if I were if I were a betting man, I would not bet against Rare Breed, especially when it comes to my palate. And the other thing that's kind of happening in our household is my wife starting to take a liking to Rare Breed, which in years past she has not. Uh, so we are, Rare Breed looks like it's replacing uh, Booker's for her, and it's replace, replacing Old Forester 1920. So what does that tell you? That means I have to hold on very tight to my Rare Breed in my home because, or bring it to my office, you know, so she can't get it. Of course, she's probably watching right now and is about to, uh, you know, say something uh caleb young says uh hi fred cheers from elizabethtown pennsylvania what's going on caleb hope you're well bill wood says he got some of the old fitzgerald is that what you're drinking right now 
Tell me what you're drinking in the comment section, and let's um, let's just kind of have like let's get this conversation going before we jump into the tasting right away. Uh, Rare Bird 101 says, "Better grab sooner or later." Thanks, Fred. <laughs> good point. Good point. All right, we've got a lot. We got looks like we've already got over a hundred people coming in. I appreciate everybody coming in and tuning in, and and we're gonna have a good time tonight. Gonna taste a little whiskey, but also uh, maybe learn something about about one another. Tell me what you're drinking tonight. Ask me whatever you like, and you know if you got a thought on one of the whiskeys that we're tasting tonight, just let me know. By the way, uh, again, I've got this cool expo going on. Go to RepealDayExpo.com to check out, check out, check it all about what it's all about. Everybody who gets a ticket gets a bottle of Jack Daniels, and well, you uh, you may be able to get that elsewhere. It's just a little something that I can give you know ticket holders through our retail partner Craft Shack. Uh, so Basil Wolf, Basil is Basil is drinking Makers 101. Blake Kester's might as well break out the rare breed. Okay, so he's doing a little uh, rare breed. Stephen Hills having Laird's 12-year-old brand, apple brandy. Nice. Nice. Uh, looks like Danny Lynn's having an old Forster store pick and going to 1920 next. Danny's a, he, he's an old Forster fan. Every time, we, a lot of chats lately, he's been, uh, he's been sipping on some uh, old Forster. Douglas Pendleton says he's having some Mountain Dew, no doubt with some vodka in it. And it looks like uh, David Willard's uh, having the Smoke Wagon 13-year-old single barrel. Nice. Uh, Angelo Aguilera. Hi, Fred. Angelo from Colorado drinking Wild Turkey Rare Breed right now. Looks like Wild Turkey's getting a lot of love. Now, Mikey Likey is having some Weller Foolproof. Nice. Jason Day, Wild Turkey 101. Boom. And Leonard Westman says, visited Heaven Hill last week, had both a 13-year, and Heaven, William Heaven Hill, both were excellent. Got a ticket to purchase the new recent Parker's Heritage. Nice. Uh, let's see. Tom Isaacs. Tom Isaacs. Is that the same Tom Isaacs who is the um, who runs the eye clinics out here in Kentucky? Having the Elijah Craig foolproof. David McFarland, Larceny Single Barrel, versus 107, versus 46. Hmm. He's having his own little taste off tonight. Love it. Michael is having four rows of small batch. Haven't grabbed the Evan Williams Single Barrel yet, but that recommendation's there, Michael. You got to go get it. It's super good. Uh, JS had Compass Box Spice Tree this evening. J Star. Hey, Fred, quick logistical question regarding the expo. expo. Do we need to do anything with Craft Shack to get our stuff? Double Platinum Guy and super excited. Actually, J Star, we will be, you'll be getting an email from me very soon um, about that. And uh, I, can't, I can't wait for you to enjoy that. So you're going to get a couple different packages. One from Craft Shack, which is obviously going to be the legally fulfilled um, bottles of alcohol. And then from me, you'll get a poster and a signed book. Ryan Norman, Bourbon Society of the Ozarks, barrel pick, 13-year-old. Okay, listen, we got to figure out what the Barrel Society of the Ozarks is like. I grew up near the Ozarks. I grew up in Oklahoma. And you didn't go in the Ozarks because you didn't know if you'd come back. And I'm just saying... What's a barrel pick from the Ozarks like? I mean, are they... What's that going to be like? I hope it's good, but... are they, I mean, did you make it? Did you survive? I kid, but there's also like a real crazy show showing how uh, scary the Ozarks can be. So... <laughs> uh, Eric Freidel is having some Wild Turkey 101. Rye, David Dindler, drinking Four Rows of Single Barrel. Okay, everybody, so it looks like we have a good, healthy selection here tonight. Definitely a lot of Four Roses and Wild Turkey from what I saw. A good chunk of Old Forester. And it looks like, um, ooh, Kitten Klein with a little Will at four-year-old. Nice. So I think what we're going to do here, I'm going to, so I told you about these bottles, what we're tasting tonight. Now, these were poured for me. I'm happy to say, everybody, 
I have I've got a I've got a new helper in the office since our last live stream and she's been making my life much more organized and helping me uh, she's amazing she does this in, a, a cr incredible job um, organize helping organize for pill day Expo and basically just keeping me you know straight on the straight and narrow because if I'm not doing it like as you all have seen by now, I'm over here while well, I'm also thinking about being over there and I'm already moving to that way, but I forgot to go that way. So I, my something's over there, you know, so I'm always going a thousand miles a minute. I can never stop that. That's who I am. If I had to focus on one thing in my life and just one thing only, I would be insane. So that's why you will always see me uh, doing 15 things and I don't necessarily always need to plan about them, but um it's good to have someone who can plan around me and Allison, uh, and I going to butcher your name. I hope not. Anyway, Delande, Delande, did I get it right? Hopefully I got it right. But Allison has joined my team. Uh, she's, she's helped out with bourbon women for a long time. She's worked with a lot of charity groups I'm a part of, and she's already made my life much, much easier and has been a big, big help. So everybody in the YouTube channel, Let's give a big round of applause and thank you to Allison because she's going to make our lives a lot easier. Okay, so these were poured for me by Allison. They are labeled A, B, C, and D. Uh, Bill Wood says Bedlam Bowl, Bowl is this Saturday. That's where... Oklahoma State and Oklahoma play. Um, I'm a, I'm afraid to watch it this year. I'm not gonna lie. I'm just a little nervous about it, but it is what it is, I suppose. I just I guess I I guess you could say I don't trust the Cowboys. The the Cowboys always find a way to break my heart, you know. So I may not even watch it. But then if they win, I'll miss that sweet joy of crushing the soul of Oklahoma. But anyway, um, it doesn't, you know, I'm sure uh, I don't want to start thinking about the Cowboys. I'll get depressed and then my palate will be way off. So, yeah. So here we go. Glass A. Now, this is a this is a spit free night. There will be no spitting tonight. Um, for the member, the member community, I did know the member community knows what that's all about. I had a, uh, I got my blood work and my cholesterol was really high. Well, it wasn't super high, but it was like it was high, and just had a doctor's visit, and the doctor was like, you know. You basically are showing the signs of everybody in COVID. And, you know, just get back to where you were. You'll be fine. So I'm not as uh, the, the doc is not as concerned about the um, about the situation as I was. So I will um, I'm not going to be spitting. Devin Patel with being the smarty pants over here. Everybody check out Devin's tweet and a little comment there. It's pretty, 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 pretty good. Mm. I like the nose. Hey, I'm actually going to pour all of them here. Kind of go back and forth. So, woo. You know what? I think I left a notebook in the other room. I don't know what these are, obviously. So, um, B is definitely, definitely a little, definitely a very different, uh, style than A. All 
By the way, I raised the camera up a little bit tonight. Um, I don't know why, but it feels it feels better to look at the camera at this angle than they did the other one. Last couple uh, sessions, I found my like I had a little crick in my like back, and I was like, "What? what where is that coming from?" So I raised the camera. I don't even I don't know if that throws off the angle or whatever. But uh, we're actually looking at maybe possibly getting a studio somewhere. And right now, this is just kind of like my office, but this is like a working tasting room, you know? Um, and um, it is definitely... I definitely like this, you know? Douglas Pendleton's asking the question, Fred, you normally pour and taste uh, sequentially. Do you ever nose all then taste? Actually, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm in a very nosing mood right now. Um, I, I'm just, I'm really, I'm really, because, and also because I only have four whiskeys and I can spend a little bit more, um, I can spend a little bit more time with you. I, I do like, uh, I do like tonight, especially, I, I like smelling them and kind of going back and forth. And also my goal, my goal was to, um, my goal was to like be a little bit more interactive than normal tonight and just kind of have some fun with the audience. Be just, just because honestly, I miss you guys. I miss you guys a lot. And I've also started like paring down these, uh, these tasting live streams to just YouTube, you know, cause I noticed what I noticed was like, like the, the Twitch audience, while it was nice, it was I'd always get these the weirdest damn questions and like you know so I started like paring that down a little bit and and I think that these are kind of designed a little bit more for YouTube and so I wanted to be a little bit more interactive tonight than normal uh let's see if I missed anything here uh, it looks like a lot of people were were going with what Devin thought when I said I was not going to be spitting tonight and uh, a couple references to the uh, show The Office. Hmm. Well, Doug is saying I need a display to read the comments more easily. I can read the comments just fine. Okay, so here we go. First taste. By the way, this is a very much like a caramel laden. There's a lot in there, a lot of like caramel, uh, a lot of like fruit. There's some floral there, and there's like um, kind of like barn wood. Ooh, yeah, that's a way to start tasting. Mm. Boy. It has like a really nice like roasted sunflower seed. Um, there's some peach in here, like a peach cobbler. But that overwhelming like caramel chew, salted caramel, uh, caramel coated apple. Uh, I mean, it's pretty prominent, pretty overwhelming, just absolutely delicious. I will say, however, that I wanted the I wanted it to last longer on my palate. It just kind of kind of came and it kind of went. Okay. Uh, Droopy Markham just said, "Go Navy, beat Army." Well, that, my friend, we have to have uh, uh, an agree to disagree. Go Army, beat Navy. So B is a very it's a very like rustic um you know cornbread and uh and an iron skillet. 
you know, a little salt and pepper kind of smell. Go Army. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's so good. I'm definitely feeling B over A because it has more it has more depth for me. It has more points of the contact on the palate. I get spice in the back. I get I get the bitter some nice bitter notes on the side. And I get some sweetness in the middle, but I also get that little tickling the roof of the palate that I just love. And there's that cornbread kind of a honey note in there. B is um B is a whiskey I can do a lot with. Uh, Droop, Droopy Markham is saying he loves the show. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, and I do appreciate your love for the Navy because there's no way in hell I could have ever d done the Navy. The Navy, to me, I, I could have never done the Navy because I could not have imagined, you know, being stuck at sea. That scares the living shit out of me. For that reason, I don't. We're not going to go onto a uh, uh, a cruise boat. But those things scare me, and not to mention, kind of gross. And then just randomly, someone pushes you overboard, and you get eaten by a shark. Glass sea. Tobacco. It's got a nice little hint of tobacco on B. Like it came out of nowhere with that finish. Now this one C is definitely in this um hmm. C is quite a bit more muted for me. I mean A had a I feel like A had a better nose. Yeah. Uh, it feels pretty. It feels a lot like um, uh, bread batter, uh, cornbread batter, and then cornbread, and then then you know there's some like it's like a paprika, like a smoked paprika. There's a like a chilliness there. I mean, it's a it's a really it's a really good taste, but again, just coming off of coming off of B, which I just continually find myself more in love with thinking about it, it just doesn't hold up let's go to go to d I'll rinse my mouth out real quick uh bill woods asked fred any thoughts on heaven hill six year uh green level green label i got two bottles last week well as a matter of fact bill woods um I have been one of the biggest champions of Heaven Hill Green Label six year old my entire life. Like, that's, we buy that constantly. That's what I buy as gifts for the holidays. Uh, it is absolutely awesome. Uh, Leonard Westman says uh, he loved my Veterans Day post, watched it three times. I appreciate that very much, Leonard. The, you know, I will. Like I said, I was trying to honor a, uh, a former professor of mine. Uh, I was a Vietnam veteran who did the same thing. And I now have, even though it's been 15 years and I'm fine, that's not something I could have done two years ago. Uh, but this is a constant like process. And I now have the courage and have the uh, mental ability and wherewithal to to do that and I just 
uh, to me, I, I can never say it enough, but I, this is why the USO is so important to me. And, and by the way, a portion of the proceeds are going to the USO for Repeal Day Expo. Go to repealdayexpo.com. But that's why the USO is so important to me is the people who serve um, need everything we got. And then after they get out, when they're not serving anymore, I think we should take care of them. So glass D and coincidentally, I'm drinking, I'm drinking glass D out of the uh, C4 foundation, which is a foundation I've helped uh, raise money for. Uh, this is named after Charles Keating, uh, one of the Navy SEALs uh, killed. And uh, he got, you know, a ton of, uh, ton of awards and the Navy SEALs gave me a, a, you know, a special award for that. But we ra we raised a lot of money that night. It's like a, Hundred thousand, I think. This is going to sound weird. I smell root beer in this. I smell like root beer and like cream soda. This is like I'm. This is like a cola. Incredible. I mean, it's good. I'm not saying my... I'm not wowed by it. I mean, it's got um, it's got like a, a maple syrup, a waffles, a pecanness. It's got this, um, this root beer to it. Um, there's like a like like a, a a juicy fruit watermelon but it but it's just it's just there and it's gone you know i it, it's one of those things like the class of this of this flight has been glass b glass b is just just hitting every point of the palate for me I'm just really feeling it uh i'm just gonna go back to glass a because glass a was com Competitive. I will say glass A is definitely competitive to glass B. We'll see about C. I originally thought C was, um, I thought C was initially a little flat, but on second taste, it, 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 it shows up a little, a little stronger in spice. Go back to D. Yeah, D is going to be my last place tonight. It's still drinkable. It's fine, but it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not tonight's winner. So D will be fourth. So now I'm gonna go between C and A. Uh, Drooky Markham, Droopy Markham asks if I have tasted Blue Run. As a matter of fact, I have a bottle in the office that just came in. I could possibly taste that uh, after this segment, but it would be in the members only community. And I didn't plan on doing a members only live stream. I mean, I suppose I could. But you have to take my kids to school tomorrow. Okay, so A and C are kind of neck and neck here. 
Uh, Devin Patel asks uh, the question, does uh, D have any flaws? Do you look for flaws? Actually, flaws are the first thing I look for. I don't always talk about it. You got to remember, like, the, the assessing a whiskey and then talking about it to a camera is is a, it's almost it's a completely different process in in some ways i mean i try to give you all as much as i possibly can but inevitably like if i'm sitting down in a quiet room and i'm i'm not having to fo focus on ver verbalizing uh what i am and i'm just writing my notes we, it'd be very different it'd be very different like i'd be focusing i first thing i do is i focus for like the bad smells and then I focus on like where, where it hits on the tongue. And then is it like, um, are there any of the like, uh, ald uh, you know, alcohol y, aldehyde y kind of uh, notes? You know, so I, I look for those. But D did not, D did not have, none of these have any flaws in them. So there's not anything in this bunch. Well, I take that back. I take that back. D, D had a fleck of musty grain. Uh, on my second taste, it had a fleck of like musty grain. So it's just like a, some barrels get like musty. It's just, there's not a better word for it, but it had a, just a little bit of that, and not a not a lot. But but that wouldn't really be a flaw, and some people would like that. It's kind of like you know, uh, I like my bacon cooked medium rare. My wife likes her bacon beyond over crispy like freaking dark as shit and um i think that's the case when it comes to that musty note some people actually like it so um so where was i so i'm, I'm having to decide between a and c i tell you what Members, if you all can convince, if you all can convince five people in here tonight to go buy tickets at RepealDayExpo.com, now oh, just a couple people, and you you know I'll probably do it anyway, but convince them anyway. We'll do the we'll do the members only tasting of Blue Run after this. So A and D, A and C. C's warming up to me. Yeah, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put A in third. And we have ourselves a royal taste off between A and C. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh, by the way, I cannot wait to tell you all. I, I can't tell you here. I can't. I don't. I don't think I can talk about it yet. But I have got a super cool video coming up. Coming up. I just really love the nose of B. A lot there to it. amazing this is why I, I taste three times almost all but wrote off uh, glass C but it really it really came on strong with a lot of that spice note 
a lot of the um, kind of bread oriented notes that I love which by the way I gave up bread so um, and the efforts to lose the weight I am trying to cut back on those types of things so uh, B and C B and C are the contenders Three Toes of Fury says, I'm thinking HH, 13-year-old for the win, but Turkey for second. Hey, your guess is as good as mine. I, when I do these, I try not to focus on what they are and try to focus on what the whiskey, you know, what the whiskey tastes like. I just think B, you know, when I first tasted it, it had so much, so much going on, so much complexity. It had that a really nice side of the mouth palate. I love it. Tickled the roof of my palate. It had that back spice, you know, action going on. Um, there was a big old beautiful caramel chew that just stuck around while all these other pieces of flavor came in. There's a cadre of spices that just kept wowing me and wowing me. And the nose was off the charts right there. I loved it. But then when I assess it and I come back to B or C, when I come to C, I almost like C more. I want to preference level like I, I see myself maybe liking uh c on a preference le level as like a, as like a, a, a drinker but i don't think it has the merit or you know the depth of b and what it comes down to is is you is you want to um you you want you want something that you think about long after you have tasted it. And for me, glass B is one I want to keep thinking about. So uh, we don't know what it is yet, but uh, glass B is going to be our winner tonight. Now, I will take some questions. Um, and I do need to go get the notebook. I have to go get the notebook uh, to find out what the winners are. Hold on, but I'll take some questions as well. Well, now that I know what the winners are, that's all the, uh, that is all the, <laughs> that is all I need to know before I, so I'll, we'll, we'll take some questions here. Um, uh, Eric, how much weight you dropping, Fred? Come on out to hot yoga with me and you'll lose 10 liters in two weeks. I used to do hot yoga and... Um, you know, doing yoga, like, I don't know, it stresses me out because I'm constantly worried I'm about to fart, you know, and I don't want to, I don't want to be that guy that, you know, farts and in, in the middle of it all. And then when you do hot yoga, your shit is so sweaty. And I'm like, oh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to put that in a bag and then have it in the car and then inevitably forget it in the car. Just. High yoga is just a lot of work, man. I, I'd rather go pump some iron or punch something, you know? Uh, Bill Woods, I have lost over 60 pounds since May. Holy shit. I went from 315 to 254. I want to lose 30 or 40 more. I'm six foot five. I want to be 215. 
Bill Woods, to you, my friend, we say, that's right. Keep on going. Keep on going. Uh, three Toes of Fury. Fred, suggestion for you. Suggestion for best books on the detailed techniques and science of how bourbon is made. Well, um, I spent a lot of time on that in Bourbon Curious. Uh, I think there's a new book coming out by Rod Arnold that also approaches that called uh, Terroir of Whiskey. Um, Lou Bryson's book, um, Whiskey Master. And I like I like a lot of the early books from Michael Jackson and... Um, big fan of those but like if you want to get into like real scientific like nitty-gritty stuff the the um uh, what, what's that book uh called um it, it, like how to make food alcohol or something like that that's like super i mean you have to realize there's a difference between like uh, entertainment enjoyment level and then the the actual scientific breakdown of the chemicals and stuff which not many of the books really do that um, okay so let's see what else we got here so who wants to know what the all right so who's bought a ticket so far for repeal day expo and again so the repeal day expo is a it's a virtual world where you get to go and like hang out with people, walk around and talk to people. Um, and but thank you for like a, a video game or the Sims. Um, and you can, you can go and just you know sit on panels. I'll be on panels and other people be, will be having panels. There's also going to be private tastings and all that sort of thing. So, uh, yes, it's, um, it's pretty exciting. Caleb Young, um, ever thought about writing a book on the Whiskey Rebellion? As a matter of fact, I have, but there's not. There's already been a lot done on that. You know, I'm actually in the middle of like, what am I going to do for my next book? You know, the next book is kind of like, I've been building myself and all these other things and. I don't have as much time to write. And to be honest with you, um, I'm trying I'm trying to earn a living for my family. And writing is just doesn't pay the bills anymore. Like there was a there was a writer um who put out on Twitter the other day that the people he used to write for had been taking his name off the stories he wrote. You know, and people are making the same amount of money that they made in 1985 on articles. So, and you have any a number of experts everywhere on everything because it's the internet. And so the value and and people don't want to pay for writing, and then people don't want to be bombarded by advertising with writing. So it is a it's it's a it's a very difficult time in human existence to be a, a creative writer. You know, I'll just be honest with you. And so that's why I have moved away from I've moved away from writing in a lot of respects to do more stuff like this, you know, like YouTube and my podcasts, which, by the way, next week, my my episode is with uh, Yellow Wolf. And the week after that, I got Ludacris. So, I mean, I love doing that stuff. It's a lot of fun. And I get to I get to have a good time with people and uh, the fact is, is writing is just not doing it as much anymore, you know. So hopefully I can get myself to that, um, you know, that spot. Uh, Dan Peters, I will support Repeal Day, but have no interest in the virtual conference. What do you got? Well, actually. If you go through the ticketing section, if you go to the ticketing section, you can click on like, you know, buy buy the tickets and it'll take you to the ticketing page. And then we have our retail area. And in the retail area, uh, you can see the the brands that are exhibiting and you can buy, you know, from uh, from that from that retailer. And so that would go to that would go to hold to support the cause, if you will. Uh, Chase Hellman, have you ever done a review of Old Pogue? 
I have. It's been a while, and I, I've had. I've had. Obviously, I've enjoyed seeing Old Pogue grow. Old Pogue is uh, is a historic brand. You know, Paul and his family have been bringing it back. They've also been making a play for that Maysville's where bourbon was, you know, first created. And I think it's a beautiful thing that they're doing. So uh, I applaud Old Pogue. Whether or not their their whiskey's going to be on the same level as what we tasted tonight, I mean, they're still young. They're still new. And they were doing a good job sourcing. And I have no, I have no, uh, uh, nothing to tell me that they won't be able to get it done because they are smart and they are good Um at understanding the bourbon world. Yeah, so how about we get to the results? First of all, thank you everybody for buying tickets to Repeal Day Expo. Uh, just go to repealdayexpo.com if you want to go see what that's all about. But this is, you know, I've been I've been helping other people put on events for a long time, but this is the first one, you know, that I'm, you know, that my company's taking the risk on and doing everything. So the support means the world to me. If you'd like to go check it out, just go to repealdayexpo.com. So shall we get to the winners of tonight? So coming in, well, this is this is a bit of an awkward, a bit of an awkward spot here. But coming in at fourth place was glass d i just kind of noted that it was and i wasn't taking notes tonight so this is from my memory i just kind of noted it was a bit flat for me and it just uh, oh caleb says i'm on the first wave of millennials and i came to the whiskey through modern digital media but the more i get into it the more the traditional outlets like books and magazines that's cool man that's cool uh so glass d was one i thought was kind of like uh uh, you know, soft. It was like you know muted. And then when somebody asked me about a, a flaw in any of them, I I brought up that I did thought that there was a bit of mustiness uh, to the grain. Well, in fourth place or last place is sixteen-year-old bottled and bond old Fitzgerald, which came out in the spring of 2020. Now some believe in the and the curse of the neck pour, and this was indeed the curse. This indeed was a neck pour. So, if you are a believer of that, and you're a fan of Old Fitzgerald, you can just blame it on the neck pour. So, coming in, what really became a um, a pretty strong. Uh, a pretty a pretty close now i think c whipped it pretty well uh coming in third place is glass a william heaven hill bottle and bond 13 year old william heaven hill 13 year old So that leaves us with the Heaven Hill 85th anniversary, 13 year old, 100 proof, or 100, excuse me, 107 proof. Um, and it leaves us, which by the way, this is a $300 SRP. And Wild Turkey Rare Breed, Wild Turkey Rare Breed, and the single barrel from Heaven Hill are uh basically it up for first and second and you know somebody the people out there were kind of like you know you know talking about what was going to be um what the you know the winner was going to be so we know now it's between rare breed and the heaven hill and i'm going to put a timer up i want you all to Put in in the, in the chat section what you think, you know, for the next 30 seconds. I want you all to uh, think or comment on. Let's see. I'm trying to get this thing here. There we go. I want you to comment on what you think the winner is. Is it going to be rare breed? 
or Heaven Hill. It looks like Rare Breed is the fan favorite. And stop. Well, I will tell you all, as you may recall, when I was going through the tasting, I said that, you know, C did not, at first, C was one that did not really uh, wow me. And then when I approached it again, I was like, whoa, hey, holy shit. And you have to know that sometimes when you taste a great whiskey and then go to the next one, Sometimes that next one can be damaged by the fact that the thing you tasted previously was so brilliant. And in fact, that's what happened here is that B, which was tasted before C in the first tasting, was really just dominant, so good, so delicious. But C was a puncher in its own weight, and it was something that after I tasted uh, A and, and D, C was a better whiskey for me today between those two however the the flavor the 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 tastiness of b just kind of like overtook c but i did note i did note how much i enjoyed how much i enjoyed the drinkability of c and c is rare breed so coming in second, defeating a highly allocated, only at a, a distillery, uh, William Heaven Hill, and defeating this beautiful bottle right here in the uh, Old Fitzgerald Bottle in a Bond. But winning uh, what was really beautiful, what was really beautiful uh, early for me and often, and just you know hit it on the on the nose for me from a flavor perspective was the upcoming release for uh heaven hill the 85th anniversary 107 proof yes it is 300 dollars. look i don't know what i mean 300 dollars is a lot of money and i just typically do not like to see uh high price points like that but when we take a look at the secondary market and where things go, you can't blame someone for for pricing something uh, as they do. And you know, and the fact is, is there's a lot of people that three hundred dollars doesn't mean much to them. I'm not one of those people, but you know, this is something that um, I would I would definitely be I would I would buy this over Pappy. I would buy this over. Uh, I don't know if I would be buying this over. You know, the Weller from this year, but I mean, that's where I'm kind of putting it on that pedestal. When I tasted B for the first time, I thought it was gorgeous. When I tasted it again, I thought it was gorgeous. It kept wowing me every single time. And it was definitely the the best of the flight. And, you know, C, uh, um, C definitely had a, I mean, it had a puncher's chance there. It really did. And I really, really did respect C. And I thought, well, now I guess I can say what they were. I thought Rare Breed was was really, it was right there. The only, the only bourbon here on this table that disappointed me was was this one. This this disappointed me. And I mean, it was again, it's drinkable. It had like that slight musty note to it. But it was it was disappointing. But uh, that being said, this was a very pleasant flight. I enjoyed it immensely. And I just continue to be amazed at how well Rare Breed. And by the way, I buy these bottles. This is not the same bottle that I had from my previous tasting. And I'm buying them from the store and I rotate them out. You know, so I'm not I'm not getting wowed by like one special bottle or anything. And I just think that says something about the consistency of this product. And, you know, and also this was a media sample. The other ones were were purchased at stores. And, you know, I noted it at the top, but this was a media sample. 
I'm not saying they job the, the samples they send out. I'm not saying that at all. I don't believe that to be true. But the fact that I that I was able to buy this from the store and it was with, you know, kind of a puncher shot of um, of being in the in the top here. I just think that says a lot about rare breed. But still, what I tasted tonight, the the flavors that I got out of um, that I got out of the Heaven Hill product, the 13 year old 85th anniversary single barrel. It's it's friggin' unbelievable. It's really good. But I think uh, mm, while we've been here on this live stream for, for over an hour, it's pretty pretty exciting. I'm glad you all uh, joined me uh, for that period of time. Um, I'm going to I'm going to go um, take a break, folks, and uh, I'm going to go uh, get things ready for the next tasting in the members only community. Um, and if you would like to become a member, just click on the membership button that's next to the subscribe button or click on the, the pinned comment at the top. There's a way to join the membership. I'm going to do a, a, a tasting of Blue Run. And I probably should pull up a little bit more information about it because actually I don't know much. I just know like some guy who designed Nike's logo or something was a part of it. I get so many press releases and stuff from these new brands. I just kind of get inundated. And, and I know this, this one's on my radar, but I'm not too uh, not too familiar with what it is or whatever. So I'll, I'll do a little research before I hop on this. But... um. Why don't you, uh, if you want to be a member and see this live stream, it will be only in the member community, and that's where the ascot comes off. So join that if you want to see it. Uh, otherwise, it'll probably become public in a week or two. That being said, uh, please, please go check out the Repeal Day Expo. Go to repealdayexpo.com. It's an event I'm putting on. I've got music performers like Lindsay L. and Sean James, uh, panelists like my buddies from Bourboner, Breaking Bourbon, uh, Sipping Corn, Bourbon Pursuit, and Peggy No Stevens. Distillers are going to have conversations with you. There's going to be private tastings. It's going to be a great time. It's going to be a great, great time. So if you can, if you'd like to, come, um, you know, come check it out. But that's going to do it for this one right now. Uh, come, uh, come on over into the members community and be looking out in the community page, folks for a link for the upcoming members only live stream so that's going to do it cheers everybody be safe out there oh a question came in from dr 079 what do i think of fistful of bourbon i think it sucks fistful of bourbon is awful i put that out on a, a review somewhere uh but i thought i thought it was awful cheers everybody